Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to White Gaming. How is everybody doing? So we are back again today for the second Generation Zero video of the day. God, I'm treating you guys. How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you're enjoying the Phoenix Rising um, gameplay that we've been doing. Obviously, I've been premiering it so we can chat whilst it's uh, live, which um, is doing really well. I'm enjoying that with you guys, so thanks a lot for the support on that. The next one for that is at Wednesday at 7. And then uh, I think we're going to do the one after that on either Friday or Saturday. I'm not too sure yet. I haven't quite figured that one out. But I will let you know when I've uh, made the decision. But today's video, what we are talking about are the Phoenix Rising patch notes. Now this is a big one. There's a lot of stuff. Whether you get the DLC or not, you are still getting a ton of awesome stuff. Um, thank you once again to Systemic Reactions, Avalanche, Generation Zero for letting me play the DLC early. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, that, that means a lot. Thank you so much once again. And thanks to all you guys for uh, well watching and uh, commenting and getting involved. I love it. So, let's jump straight in with the patch notes. There's a lot. This is going to be quite a lot to go through. So, uh, uh, take a seat. Enjoy. It's summertime. We're kicking things off with an introduction to our second expansion, Phoenix Rising. Like Alpine and Rest, the update alongside the expansion adds more to the game for everyone to enjoy, whether you decide to grab the expansion or not. There's a lot in this update as we put in new content alongside some improvements and bug fixes. So let's get to what's new. New expansion, Phoenix Rising. Osterton has undergone a significant change as Phoenix starts to impose its influence on the land. The South Coast region is now dotted with a variety of machine structures that are in stark contrast to the once more traditional and peaceful landscape. There are also more signs of a battle that took place between the military and the machines in the early days of the uprising. Areas in the farmlands now show the scars of the battles that once took place there. Um, if you haven't seen my video already, with what you get in the DLC, which showcases all the farmlands and things like that, then uh, go check that out. The farmlands is going to look amazing. I'm going to have a ton of different videos coming out over the coming months, so uh, make sure you stick around for that. Once again, we've added to the story of Generation Zero by introducing more missions, as well as showcasing some of the new but familiar faces. We think you'll be happy to meet one of the more talkative ones, mm, who has some interesting theories. Now we all know who that crackhead is. Sorry, that was very rude of me. The crazy man in the tinfoil hat. <laughs> um, as Phoenix continued to push itself, it's also evolved one of its machines again by upgrading the Harvester to the Apocalypse class. Like the other Apocalypse class machines, the Harvester brings with it some deadly attacks. Be particularly aware of the gas attack. And of course this expansion also brings with it a bunch of other things for you to enjoy. More apparel items, collectibles, challenge trees, and achievements are included. As you may have seen, we've also given you a new way to fight back the machines with melee weapons. Utilize the Branball Bat and the Sledgehammer to bash your way through the metal monstrosities that roam the lands. Oh yeah, that's going to be fun. So, additions and improvements. So what about the other bits that come with the update? The ones you won't need to get the expansion for. Well, it's a mix of good stuff that we hope will improve the game for you. I can safely say it will improve the game. It is... Everything that they've added to this one is absolutely awesome. I'm loving it so far, and I know you guys will as well. Both the Apocalypse Class Harvester and the melee weapons have a chance to occur in the base game, but you won't see them very often. There's also a brand new challenge tree to work through so that you can earn some rewards. On top of that, we've expanded a power crafting, another four tiers so that you have more and better ways to customize your gear. Take note, however, there are now three new crafting materials you'll need together. Titanium, Aluminium and Tungsten. And for some of our long-term players, the inclusion of the ability to go prone will be a welcome return. Hell, goddamn, yeah. Okay, now for some improvements we've included, some of which directly inspired by your crew. So, so many of you will be happy to hear this. I was so happy to hear it, and it feels so much better now. We've turned down the difficulty across the board based on overwhelming player feedback. While still challenging, it won't be punishing. Keep feedback so we can fine tune this as best possible. Now, obviously, a lot of people, including myself included, had major issues with the um, just getting absolutely slaughtered by rockets and anything that come at you. It didn't matter what difficulty you were playing on. 
But now they've sort of tweaked that, which I think is absolutely awesome. It's going to be great. So, yeah, it's going to be so much fun. You guys are going to love this DLC. Remember, this drops tomorrow on PC. Um, it will be coming to consoles, but that'll be a little bit later. I shouldn't have thought it would be too long, maybe a week, I reckon. That's my personal. I'm not 100% sure on that. So, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. We've added the, ab the ability to switch ammo type with a single button press without having to navigate your inventory which is absolutely amazing it's so good the experimental kvm has now been permanently added to the rival loot pool hell yeah experimental weapon drop rates from rivals has increased once again hell yeah loving that we've added an aim toggle option uh, the mission based points of interest icon has been updated to make it more clear what your objectives are if you see my gameplay, you will notice that it is so obvious now, and it looks so much crisper. I love it. The map is just beautiful. We've updated how the other team members are shown on the map to make it more visible for colorblind users. That's awesome. That's a good little thing. I like that. Uh, the stamina bar has been visually tweaked, and now your stamina has a two-second cooldown before it starts recovering after uses stamina. Uh, that's melee swings as well as sprinting. One thing I don't like about the melees is the, oh, you shoot, I think it'd be good to have some sort of stamina points so you can upgrade that. Um, it might be already in there and I just haven't upgraded it. But yeah. So, bug fixes. Now this, this is a long list, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, get comfortable. It's going to be a long ride. So, the UI, community report. Fixed an issue where sometimes after unequipping and re-equipping weapons, after loading the game after the last patch, HUD slots would disappear. So, fixed an issue where some locations did not register on the in-game map when discovered. Fixed an issue where your primary weapon would disappear from your HUD if you equipped and unequipped lots of attachments. Then unequip and re-equip the primary weapon. That's a mouthful. That is confusing. Fixed an issue where menu screen would be duplicated on top of another menu screen if you joined a multiplayer session whilst in that screen. Fixed an issue where icons would not be easily clickable if they were very near or stacked on each other in the map screen. Fixed an issue where the skill stamina amount was incorrectly reducing your stamina regeneration rate. There we go, so there is a skill for stamina. Ooh, sorry. Fixed an issue with trying to spawn at a safe house if other players are in the area due to the cursor selecting them instead of the drop down options. Fixed an issue where attachments were not shown on the weapon in the player's inventory, but did appear in-game. Um, fixed an issue where the vision mode selection was scoped would overlap with the equipment slot. Fixed issues where bunker missions would automatically override your current track mission. That was very, very annoying. That's always been an issue. It's drive me insane. Fixed an issue where sometimes the revive and abandon options would not appear when a player entered the down state. Fixed issues where on rare occasions, players would get stuck in a revive state if they tried to open the inventory at the moment of death. Wow. No, that was an issue. Fixed an issue where the screen would not entirely go black when falling into water when using the screen resolution other than 16 to 9. Fixed an issue where the damage over time icon would overlap with the stance icon. Fixed issues where the icon shown when looting a crate would be different than what is shown in the storage box. Um, fixed an issue where sounds were not playing when the collectibles in the collectibles menu. Oh, I must have had that book. I did not know they were meant to do that. Okay, that's cool. Nice, it's fixed. Fixed an issue where this is basically certain symbols um, appear correctly now. I'm not gonna. I can't describe a symbol. I can describe the and and the hashtag, but uh, I don't know. I didn't do very well in English. Um, I don't know the other one. Fixed an issue. Uh, issues of missing text strings for locations. So we have got left missions, machines, and world. Oh, wait. Oh, Jebby. So there's. Uh, missions? There's not that many. Fix an issue with Break of Dawn, where it sometimes takes a while for the ammo box to spawn. Uh, break of Dawn, where sometimes enemies would not spawn with the correct POI icon as their head. Uh, break of Dawn, where the mission would icon would stay above the Etavik safe house. 
even after everything was completed. Um, nothing but snow, where sometimes Hunter was not spawn. Hogging supplies and arms race using the wrong mission icon. So that's it for missions with the machines. Oh yeah. So they fixed the issues where the machine corpses were floating away or levitating. Now I've noticed that that keeps cropping up. So I'm not too sure what that is. I don't. I'm not going to pretend that I know anything about what goes into developing a game because I don't. Um, but that is a reoccurring issue that seems to keep happening with some people. Um, I mean, touch wood. I have been very lucky. Other than the insane difficulty, I've not had any issues. I fell through the map what, four or five times, but other than that, I'm okay. Um, from what I can see, a couple of issues have been on... Well, the majority of issues have been on PlayStation. Um, that's just personal opinion from what people have commented and said. But, you know, this update is a step in the right direction. This is by far, from what I can see, the biggest patch notes they've ever done. So, a lot of things have been fixed, which is great. And I think it's onwards and upwards from here, really. Um, but, well, machines, what else we've got with um, the experimental KVM-59's electricity would knock a machine out of its emp state. Uh, sometimes rivals would not spawn, even when the proper conditions were met. Uh, sometimes a machine that was destroyed by, a gra by the rocket launcher <laughs> would have its debris turn pure black before despawning. Uh, sometimes a tank would get stuck alternating between two animation states and would never fire. That's not a bug, that's a beautiful thing. It gives us a chance to survive. Uh, sometimes the tank would not engage with players who were attacking it from extreme distances. Uh, the tank's concussion attack range match the VFX. Uh, the tank's missile attack would fire, but not land if the player was too far away. <gasps> Shit! That's annoying, so we can't stand miles away anymore. Okay, we're gonna have... Ah, that's fine by me. It looks like I'm getting up close and personal. We've got a sledgehammer and a baseball bat now. We'll be fine. Um, fix an issue where sometimes harvesters would not call in reinforcements. And the final one for machines is harvesters launch of the effects were not synchronized with weapon firing. So with world, there, there's quite a chunk on world, but you know, that's going to be nice. Fixed an issue where heavy fog was present in the south coast region. Uh, intense light being seen in the Torsberger Fortress, which is very annoying. I did have that bug. Um, and the fog as well. The fog was just overwhelming. It is part of the south coast, but I don't think it was meant to be that much. Several issues where an item or loot break could not be looted due to its placement in the world. Issues where Elsa was spawning in the wrong place. Issues where a hole in the world would allow players to go underneath the Minkum Bunker. Ah, oh, what? I didn't think he could do that. Issue with floating lanterns in the archipelago region. And issue where sometimes loot crates would spawn on top of each other. And issue where storage box icons was constantly showing up from a long distance at the Divic safe house. Uh, fixed an issue where fire damage area being too large near the burning wreckage in the south coast region. Uh, a window in Boo Brook AB would be broken but not shot through. Stamina recharge not being applied when the player is moving. Uh, the Jork car, where the wrong hood was used. <laughs> That's a very little bug. Uh, various collision issues, log issues, floating object issues, and world texture issues. So, for general, the issue where sprint would sometimes stop working, fix an issue where players were incorrectly able to loot the chaff rounds from the yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to see. <laughs> I just can't get the Swedish. I'm trying, I do try, but I just can't seem to do it. Um, players with older saves would log in and instantly be encumbered. Crazy makeup face paint would sometimes flick up other players in a multiplayer session. Um, eye patch pirate appeal item would blink along with the player. Yeah, that's, not, that's not a glitch or bug, that's someone flirting. Um, fixed issues with silenced weapons not using the proper sound variation depending on how close another player was to the weapon. An issue where the electricity VFX on the experiment of KVM was incorrectly attached to the weapon barrel. And an issue sometimes deployable tick pods would not deploy a tick. And an issue where friendly ticks would often explode too far away from an enemy to effectively do damage. So, um, there is a really long part. 
about um, their, their known issues. But I'm going to leave that to you guys. Um, it's not a lot of known issues. It's just they've wrote down quite a big chunk of stuff so people know what's being worked on. Uh, I'm not going to go into that in this video. You can check that out for yourself. Obviously, all the links to the socials, the forums, are all in the description below. So you can go and check that out there. Um, but the final note is while the update and expansion come to PC tomorrow, which is the 23rd, uh, we are still working on getting them out on consoles ASAP. We currently don't have an exact date for you, but we'll provide more concrete details once we date, once we feel comfortable we can hit it. Keep your eyes on our Facebook and Twitter page so you know as soon as we have more info. The Generation Zero team. So, that is it from the Generation Zero team, and that is it from Y Gaming. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Tomorrow it is out. I am super excited. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Uh...